What's up everyone, this is Dr. Webb here. Thank you guys for watching this video. Make sure you subscribe. New videos come in every week. You don't want to miss them. Today I have a very special guest who's going to tell us uh, about his time as a physician, um, medical communications fellow for the uh, Grey's Anatomy show. Um, and he's going to tell us how he got to that point and also maybe some advice for everyone else out there who wants to go either in general surgery or kind of take this route. Dr. Metzner, what's up, man? How you doing? Good. I'm doing well. Yeah, first I just wanted to congratulate you. Um, and for people who don't know, a little bit of background, me and uh, Dr. Metzner, we were in a case one day, and that's actually how we met. We were doing a yeah. joints case with a vascular surgery and a spine case. And then uh, he mentioned, you mentioned that you were going to be moving to L.A. I was like, hold on, you're a, general, you're a general surgery resident. You're about to move to L.A. How does that work? Yeah. And uh, I think that's really dope, man, that you're, you know, doing this. But tell us uh, who you are and kind of um, wh what are you doing right now in your life? Yeah, so I have kind of a weird story. I think that's kind of the – I'm just a weirdo. And yeah. a lot of ways. <laughs> <laughs> I come from a background in the arts. Um, I was in TV and film when I was younger. I was a kid actor, um, loved theater, loved film, loved being on stage. Um, but I always had a passion for medicine. Yep. So I think it was about like 12 or 13 when I said I was going to be a surgeon, but I was relatively successful in the arts, became a photographer, did some freelance fashion work over in France. And while I was there, I applied to medical school, went to med school at University of Central Florida. Um, from there, I still had a passion for the arts wrote a play while I was there, uh, started an arts and medicine organization, then started general surgery residency at UT San Antonio, um, <clears throat> where, you know, I'm starting to be a pediatric plastic surgeon, because I think that's probably one of the more creative places within medicine and kind of jives with both of my, I have a degree in art and biochemistry. But, uh, about six months ago, uh, ABC actually emailed every general surgery residency in the country saying that they were looking for someone to be their medical communications fellow. Oh. Um, they extend the opportunity to an individual who stays, our contracts are three to six months generally. And so they did kind of a spam to all of these general surgery residencies. <laughs> and it was actually UT San Antonio when they got the email they thought of me uh, just because of my crazy background and so they had said hey if you want to give this a try we'll we'll support you um, sounds like a really crazy opportunity that's up your alley and I laughed because I was like well there's no way that I'm gonna get it <laughs> but, you know this is a show that I grew up watching uh, specifically like I remember in high school I used to watch with my family like every week and uh, it's just kind of a staple within pretty much medical culture and pop culture. Uh, it's been around for 15 years. Uh, and so I applied thinking I would regret it if I didn't apply. And two days later, I got a call from uh, an executive producer. I had an interview and I was hired on the spot. So, wow, that's awesome, man. So yeah. let me get this right. You're a general surgery resident. What, what year are you? Uh, I finished my second year and now I'm uh, two years of research. So two this years is of research. Of research. Okay. Time. And now you work for uh, Gray's Anatomy as a doctor. Yep. Uh, what is your um, what What is your role there? What What do you do for Gray's Anatomy? So I was hired <clears throat> originally as a uh, medical communications fellow, which is where we're in the writers' room while they're developing all of the story arches for the season, um, and we come up with the medical stories that coincide with the social stories. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times, you know, they'll give me a theme of a different episode and then I come up with a medical scenario. Or let's say they read some article about a really cool medical case, they'll send it to us and then we'll work on developing that story and figuring out the feasibility of it. Gotcha, because people always watch TV and some of the things that happen in TV are necess not necessarily how they happen in real life. Um, yeah. So how accurate or how kind of close to real life do they, obviously they try to make it as close as possible, but uh, do you see that as pretty similar to kind of what it, you, you are a doctor, general surgeon, how similar is it? 
to roll yeah, out. I always, <laughs> people always ask me that question. And the way that I think the most politically correct way to answer that is that, you know, we want to be as realistic as possible, but it's also a television show. So, you know, drama, of course, sells. And it's, you know, it's a really cool situation to be in because I get to teach 11 million people at the same time, you know, about different medical maladies and just how cool it is to be a general surgeon or a surgeon in general. Um, you know, every case that we do is at least based off of at least one case study. So, you know, when the premiere ha happened, I got texts from a lot of people saying, I've never seen that before. <laughs> like that. And I always are like, well, I have case studies. <laughs> it has definitely been done before. So yeah. although, uh, of course, the cases we use a lot of times are like that one in a million. Yeah. Um, the majority, if not all, have medical validity. To them. That's really interesting. Um, how was it the first time kind of visiting the show and the set and meeting some of the actors from the show? How was that? <laughs> it was crazy. It was really crazy. Um, <clears throat> very different from what my life was back in San Antonio. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, it's being in a room with 10 writers and having whiteboards and brainstorming and breaking stories and just like talking for eight hours a day. <laughs> you know, very, very different. Um, the first time I met everyone, uh, Chandra Wilson plays Dr. Uh, Miranda Bailey. She's been yeah. the one I call my spirit animal since I was yeah. in high school. <laughs> uh, that, was, that was crazy. And we're now really good friends. Uh, she's actually directed a couple of the episodes. And <clears throat> it's really fun to be integrated in every aspect of the show because I was originally just in the writer's room, but now I have this position where I bridge the writers and production. So I get to still help with the stories on the medical side of things within the writer's room. Um, I'm not physically there as much, but then I work with the production staff and I actually work with artists to make the prosthetics to make them look as real as possible. So I go to the artists who have been working on these special effects from the time of Jurassic Park, like the original. They do all the Marvel movies and everything. And here I am and I'm, I have my drawings and I like try and work with them to make the, the most realistic looking prosthetics and surgery abdomens and any crazy thing that we're doing. And then I'm on set <laughs> and I get to work with all the actors and try and make them look as much of surgeons as possible. Gotcha. It's, it's a lot of fun. Yeah, you kind of mentioned, or you kind of already answered this question, but like a typical day for you, kind of starts at what time and ends at what time? It's probably really sporadic maybe. It is. So right now we're filming two episodes at the same time and prepping two episodes. Oh. So it is plus all the other scripts that are being in development. So it gets really busy. You know, I left <laughs> general surgery residency saying <clears throat> this is going to be a piece of cake. Yeah. <laughs> and it is definitely different. It's a different type of stress. Um, when I started in the writer's room, a typical day was 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. And that was like, I was on cloud nine. Uh, now being in production side of things, I can be on set as early as 6.30 and I've wrapped at 11 p.m. before. Wow. Um, I mean, I do have weekends off though. Yeah, so. <laughs> but yeah, no, there's definitely hours to be done. Got you. So you say that email went around and do you know how many people that they looked at or interviewed and chose you? They don't share that information. Share that? Okay. I know that this year was the most competitive year. That's all I know. <laughs> and do you yeah. have to be general surgery? Is that what they prefer? Or can yeah. I apply next year and be? Yeah, you have to be a general surgery, surgery resident. Uh, okay. Or have had You're the wrong fill. <laughs> Actually, you know, they do have some plastic surgery residents or uh, fellows who have come come through. I'm actually. I think probably they would take an orthopedic surgeon, especially now that we have orthopedic surgeons on the show. Yeah. And it's really funny because I don't really have a huge background in ortho. Yeah. You know, I stay away from bones. <laughs> and uh, it's really funny. I have a funny story. Uh, we were doing our first ortho case, and I had no idea. <laughs> like, I mean, I have 
general idea. Yeah. So I'm texting one of my friends who's an orthopedic surgeon, and they are literally walking me step by step. Oh, that's There's awesome. Text message, and I'm teaching the actor on set. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. <laughs> so, yeah. It was really cool. Uh, where do you see yourself in the next uh, five years? Obviously, you're going to finish your general surgery residency. Um, and then you said plastic, pediatric plastic surgeon. Yeah. And do you see yourself doing more TV, more, kind of more art and science in the future? Yeah. You know, I think my entire career has been trying to find that niche of how I can unite the arts and sciences. Uh, they've always told me I had to choose to be either a doctor or an artist, and I never said that I would. Uh, and so this is just kind of, I think, a testament that you don't have to choose. I mean, you have to prioritize your time differently depending on where you are in training. But in five years from now, um, I will be hopefully finishing, <clears throat> at that point, uh, general surgery residency. Um, you know, with the connections that I've made and you know, having as much fun as I'm having out here, I could totally see doing this later on. Um, probably not as full time as I am now, but uh, I think it will be part of my career at some point. Gotcha. Well, Dr. Yeah. Metzner, I really appreciate it, man. You're really an inspiration because I had no idea this was even a possibility that you could do this as a physician. Um, and that's the reason why I kind of run this kind of series uh, to show people out there there's so much else out there that you can do outside of medicine or kind of conjointly in medicine. So. Uh, yeah. you know, s salute to you, man, and correct, congrats on all your success, and uh, we'll see you back when you get back to San Antonio. Yeah, thank you. No worries. Everyone else, thank you for watching this video. Make sure you subscribe. New videos come in every week. You don't want to miss them. We'll see you next time.